everyone. It is finally time to do a review of every 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I reviewed this year. And this information can also extend to other battery brands. For instance, Redoto Power and Lytime are the same company. And I believe Power Queen batteries are the exact same cells as well. The BMSs seem to be a little bit slightly differently programmed, but the batteries themselves seem to be the same cells. I've gone through, I've looked at their current price. Unfortunately, um, this is before tariffs might or might not affect the price in the United States. And this also doesn't affect, this doesn't maybe represent the price in other countries. So this information will probably be outdated later in this year. But you can take the watt hours from the discharge tests, the multiple discharge tests that I've done, and divide the price by that to see which one has the cheapest power. In this case, the Okomo. But if you want a BMS that has Bluetooth, well, it's a different story. For every single discharge test, these batteries were moved on this little homemade cart to our apartment and back. Well, let's say a journey of three quarter miles the entire way there and back again. And so that also counts as a, rugg a ruggedness test. I have not had any issues with these batteries, so the build quality seems fairly high. And we ran either our high quality, high efficiency air conditioner off of this, which usually runs around 350 watts in summer, or we ran our gaming computers off of it. So initially I wrote down if it was AC or PC. Later on, I decided to write down if it was roughly 150 watts being used or roughly 250 watts being used. On the 100 amp hour batteries, I did notice that pulling 250 watts significantly changed the efficiency of how well it converted the chemical energy into electrical energy. With these, I think it, it's only really an issue whenever the BMSs are too small for them, but it's not so much an issue with these. The lowest discharge never went below 2100 watt hours. That's right on the line. And then the highest discharge went 2,460 watt hours, and that was the PC-150 standard. I thought that I wouldn't be getting that efficiency back, but with pulling 250 watts, I got 2449. So I think it just depends on how long it sits cooking on the charger, how much of those extra watt hours it gets. Now there's also a little bit of interesting science here that you might be able to get slightly more capacity from these batteries after, you, after you've used them 10 or 20 times because even the companies recommend breaking them in a bit and using them a bit. So I wish I had the capacity to use these enough to get full 10 or 20 discharges, but it's honestly a real pain to move that. Now with this, we've moved, oh, say like uh, 50 kilowatt hours. We've saved so much power moving that to our apartment. We've kept our power bill down to about $30. Now, here is the pricing information. We have Tezzy Power, Lytime, Okmo, Redodo, and Grinner Power. Now, with Bluetooth, these two are Bluetooth ones. And I'm going to be honest, I hate the Lytime app. You have to sign in, you have to make an account. Whereas the other ones, like Tezzy Power, you can just use Overkill Solar's app. You don't need to sign in or anything. And a few BMS battery brands are like that. So I really enjoy just being able to install the app. You don't need to talk to their servers. Also, the apps for these ones will actually show you the information. And I believe the other brands have a similar BMS in them. So please check other videos if you need a Bluetooth BMS. But for me, I enjoy having just a simple, non-wirelessly connected battery. And at only 15 cents per watt hour, I think that's how that math goes, the Okomo has the best like price per watt hour. But what if you want the cheapest battery? Oh shoot, I guess that's also, also the cheapest battery. Hmm. Interestingly enough, Grinner Power was the highest price one. And I can't really find much about them. Like, like there's only one of these left on Amazon and they're not on Alibaba or AliExpress. So are they still making these? Honestly, the prices are uncompetitively high for a non-BMS model. $2,900 for it, it seems a little bit outdated. So 
I wonder if we're going to see more from Gunner Power. They still send me batteries. They sent me a 100 amp hour battery, so that's interesting. Meanwhile, the other companies are trying to lower their prices quite a bit. Redoto Power had an issue with the BMS where it um, it shut off at 11.8 volts, then 11.10, and then 10.9 volts. That kind of messed with my plans because that just means my inverter never beeped and sent a, an, an alarm because my inverter is designed for a lead acid, as most 12 volt inverters are, and it didn't notify me that the voltage went down so low. Now this most likely uh, shows that the individual cells weren't quite balanced enough as that ba voltage gets lower. The Redoto power being $600, honestly it feels like the Lightime and the Redoto, Redoto power probably have different marketing teams and maybe they program them a little bit differently. But if you look at the molding, the molding of the of the batteries are exactly the same and here's the funniest thing every so often somebody will be offering me a battery for review and they'll forget and send it from the wrong email this, these people that do this work for multiple companies like um i think grunner power someone from grunner power emailed me under a different battery brand i was like oh hello tim got or whoever it was i can't recall who it was but Another co another company had uh, like obviously they're they're just having multiple brand names, so some of these are interchangeable. These three don't look to be interchangeable. These look like they are different castings, so you might be able to tell they might be of their own unique sort. So it might be good to look at how it's cast, and then you can see is that battery. Probably, well, after a year or so, they're not going to be having, you know, because they always change the designs. After after 2025, they probably won't be having them consistently. But if you see a battery for sale from a brand name that you don't know, look closely at the molding, at the designs of the picture, and maybe you can see, is it from this one? Is it identical to this one? Is it identical to this one? Because they're always changing the brand names, trying to subvert... Uh, brand reliability and basically flood the market. So far, we've done 114 kilowatt hours. That's pretty good. Now, the other thing is, where should you buy these from? For instance, I don't think I would necessarily trust buying a battery directly from a battery company's website. I just wouldn't. Now, do I trust buying it from Amazon? I trust the refund policy. I've heard different things about, was AliExpress, that they do technically have a return policy, but I've just never used that website. So, for instance, with the Tezzy Power, I don't know for sure how useful that is. And buyer beware, I don't want to just say, oh yes, go to this website and buy this. I appreciate it when anything is on Amazon because, like for instance, with, uh, with the, the 12 volt, 200 amp hour Okomo battery, it is on Amazon, and it is for that price, $370. It's pretty good. And I just wouldn't really want to add yet another entity that I pay a bunch of money to. Now, maybe if I was going to spend $10 on a card I don't really care about, link to a savings account that I only have $50 in, maybe. For making a big purchase like this, I'm a little bit reluctant to um, pull out that card for uh, a different website. Looking at this information, I know it is a bit, only a, a little bit of information having five test samples, two of them being the same, but being the same as Power Queen. But I think if I was gonna give any more advice, I would say that battery companies such as Go Kilowatt Hour do not seem to be having a very good time with things. There, the battery build quality has some issues. And if you need a, a cheap battery with a Bluetooth BMS, that might be an option. Something like Battery of Power also similarly underperforms. Again, these are companies that are, you can tell who they're linked with based upon how the battery looks. So Battery of Power most likely is, let's see, what's, what's this one? 
It's just green. Ow. Seacon. Oh, shit. I forgot to do this. There's a review. I hope they're not going to be angry with me. I forgot about this battery. Huh. Because this one actually gave pretty good power. 1265 watt hours. Maybe I need to test that more. Well, I just kind of proved myself wrong. Looking at how the batteries look similar isn't necessarily a good test. And uh, I forgot I had that battery to, to, to review. Oh, well. At least they did say that I could forget about it until the big video, and they'd just be happy to have it in the video. <laughs> oh, well. I need to be better organized with my batteries. Pretty much it, just the, the information left over from all of our tests and discharges and experiments and shenanigans with these. And I have a friend who wants one for his battery system. I think I'll probably give him the light time because he probably doesn't mind the BMS being like that. But I'm going to keep in the Okmo for myself. And I think I'm going to be keeping the Grunner Power for myself as well because it has a very high power output and that might be good for some things. And then the other ones, I'll probably see about selling to friends or helping people start their first solar panel system. Thank you very much for all the companies that sent these in. I'm done reviewing 200 amp hour batteries. Yeah. At least for this year, and probably next year too. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.